Hi everyone, in this time lapse tutorial I'm going to show you a few tips and techniques for drawing shorter shiny fur. A couple of weeks ago I uploaded a similar sort of tutorial but a longer fur for a cocker spaniel and it was the, the fur on the body. And I had a couple of questions on social media, how I get something similar but for a shorter fur type. So this tutorial is going to focus on that. The main tips and techniques that I shared on the Cocker Spaniel version in terms of your contrast and the layering are going to be the same. But here we really need to focus on the pencil work. So how long the pencil details are, how thick they are to get the texture of a shorter coated dog correct. So when we get to that part of the fur, I'll go into that in more detail. Now for my portraits, I always start off with the eye first. As you know, if you've seen other tutorials here on YouTube, it is the soul of that animal, you know, it's where most of the expression stems from. So I want to make sure that I've captured that and I've got it right before I tackle any other element on the portrait. From then, once I've done one of the eyes, I will then usually start mapping in the fur around it. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Once I've got a good base foundation in place and I've got a nice soft transition from my lights and my darks, I can start mapping in my first layer with my pastel pencils. Now for my base layers, I think it's really important to get them nice and soft. The, the more blended they are, I think it's easier to add our details on top. And this is especially the case when we're working with that shine and trying to capture the sheen within the fur. And that is one of the main tips here that I can give anybody. If you have harsh edges on your first base layer, you're not going to be able to get that soft transition that the shinier fur has because you're always going to be fighting against those edges to start with. And once I start building up, when I'm working on fur like this where it's darker, I will always work from dark to light. I want to be focusing on what is closest to the skin and building up my values from there. One of the main things here that's noticeable is I'm building up my layers gradually. I don't jump into my brightest highlights first and that's really important. If you're finding that the portraits you're creating, they feel a little bit flat, you don't have the same amount of detail or depth within the fur, it's usually because there are not enough layers. If a portrait takes a couple of hours and you, you feel like you want to improve on that, maybe draw it again, but allow five hours, you know, at least double it. Then think, right, at each layer, I'm going to take that much longer to make sure that I'm adding as much depth and detail here as I can. One of the easiest things to do is add too much detail early on. And this is something that, you know, from personal experience, I always used to do this when I was new to portraits. Adding the details is one of my favourite parts of any portrait you know any portrait any medium that I'm working in but it's really important to wait and add those till the very end you know your brightest highlights need to be saved for your last layers if you imagine that the dog the subject whatever it is that you're drawing is in front of you and you were to stroke that animal the details that are brightest they are sat on the very top they need to be left last you know they would be stroked first all the fur where if you were to you know really try and ruffle up the fur with your fingers closer to the skin that's the texture that I'm trying to build up initially and then I can build up my layers from there. So this section of the tutorial as you can see here I am explaining something and this is because I uploaded this section as a real-time tutorial for Patreon. Because all this is real-time I can explain every single process, any thought that comes into my mind as to why exactly I'm doing that, why I'm using that pencil and the techniques that I am using. So if that's of interest and you'd like to see that all, as I say, that real-time tutorial, I will link my Patreon in the description below. If you've got any questions about Patreon as well, pop them in the comments, I'm more than happy to answer them. If you want to see the type of content I've got available on Patreon, I will link my Patreon library in the description below. I've got a list of my pastel and acrylic tutorials that are available as soon as you sign up. So now the right side here is a larger surface area on the top part of the head. Given the angle of the photo, you can really see how important it's been to get that layer nice and blended. And as this develops, you'll see that the main reason why this is looking realistic from the eyes to the fur is my contrast. And this is something I talk about in every single video because it is so important. I've got the highlights in the eyes really bright, but I've also got my shadows, you know, the darkest parts like the inside of the ear and between the eyes. That's really dark. That's enabling this face to look far more three dimensional. If I had my darks looking a little bit more like a, a grey type of colour, I'm not going to be able to achieve the same amount of depth. 
Now I do have my video here on YouTube where it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels and I'll link that in the description below because there I show you a side by side comparison of just how much the contrast plays a part and I can show you one that's got less contrast compared to one that's got more contrast. Exactly the same portrait so you can see it side by side and just then how much it makes a real difference. So after my contrast, which is always my main focus, there are two things that I am really making sure I'm getting accurate to that reference photo. The first is the fur direction, the other is the fur length. Now that is really, really important because if we make our pencil strokes too long, we're gonna make the Staffordshire Bull Terrier look like a long coated dog, which is obviously not what we want. The second that we start to either shorten or lengthen our pencil strokes and not follow that reference photo, that dog will not look like that dog once the portrait is finished. The fur texture is so important. Now alongside that you then have your fur thickness and that's going to depend on how much pressure you're putting on that pencil, how fine a point you've got to that lead and all of these things are elements that I talk in depth with in my Patreon tutorials because they are significantly slower, often real time, I'm able to explain that as I'm going. Because quite often where I've got a sharper point versus a blunt point to my pencil, there is a reason for that. You know, it's not just because I haven't sharpened it or I've decided not to sharpen it. Most of the time it's because I'm going for a specific type of pencil stroke. With any portrait we're doing, where we place the highlights and the shadows is crucial. I speak about again this in all of my tutorials. If you move the placement of the highlights and shadows, you will adjust the underlying bone and muscular structure. A highlight, for instance, above the eye, like here on Albert's face, is indicating that that's where the eye socket is. It joins onto the top of the skull. All of these highlights here are showing where there's ridges underneath the skin. I have to make sure that I've got these in the right place. Now when we're working on shiny fur this is even more exaggerated because your contrast is in most cases even sharper. So if we have a really dark highlight a little too further across to the left or the right we do potentially then end up making the face either too narrow or too broad. Both of those things obviously are going to then really impact the final portrait. So all of these things really do need to take in you know, a lot of consideration throughout the drawing process. Now I also have a video here on YouTube for my top tips for drawing black fur so I will link that in the description below as well. And one of the things there that I discuss is how the colours that we use, often we think that black fur, the same with white fur, doesn't require the same amount of layers because we think of it as just one colour. But black fur and white fur is very reflective. You'll notice here how many layers I'm having to build up to get the amount of depth in the fur. There would be no good in me just doing two or three layers and then expecting it to look realistic. I want to make sure that I've got just as much depth with this colour fur as I would something like a red Labrador or a chocolate Labrador. So on the face we often find that the top part of the head contains more of that shiny fur effect where that head and the skull is curved over. But on the bridge of the nose here I'm still adding my subtle highlights building up my contrast gradually. One of the common things that can happen is if you know that you're using the right lightness of pencil, so you're using the right value, but it's not quite showing up in the same way as you would like, the reason being is usually because your base layer isn't dark enough. And when we're drawing black fur, this is one of the most common things that happen. We're too scared to go too dark in case we then can't lighten it back up. But quite often then, if you don't go dark enough, you're going to end up making a black dog look like a grey dog. So quite often, just be far more confident, apply that darker colour and build up your layers from there. Because one of the main benefits of working with pastels is you can layer your light colours over dark. As long as you're careful at the beginning stages not to fill the tooth of the paper, there's no reason why areas where they are a little bit too dark can't be made brighter. Now quite often, it very rarely happens, usually we have to go darker. It's, it's just a confidence thing, especially as I say when we're working on these darker coats like this black Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And this whole section that I'm working on here is a prime example. I've gone down with a very dark base layer. It has to be dark because the top of the head needs to look shiny. One other element that's, that can happen is if you feel like your highlights aren't bright enough, like in the shiny fur, but you know you're using your brighter pencils, you're, not, you're still not happy with how bright and shiny it looks. It's usually because whatever is next to it is not dark enough. 
So for instance, the mark in the whiter patch on the top of the nose. I know that I'm using my brighter pencils, but if that still wasn't as bright, I knew I had to then darken the area to the right hand side. Once I darkened that, this whiter marking on the bridge of the nose will look much brighter automatically without even adding any lighter details. And because capturing shiny fur really does depend on your contrast, there's one big tip that I can give anybody to constantly check their contrast when you're working with pastels. And that is to turn your reference photo black and white, take an accurate photograph of your portrait and then turn that photo black and white and compare the two. You'll then be able to see exactly how dark your values are compared to your reference photo and the same with your highlights. If you feel like the reference photo is darker in some of the shadows, that's when you know you have to go ahead and make your portrait darker. So doing that one method can really help by always double checking your contrast because it can be a little harder to judge that when you're used to working potentially from graphite and then you have started with a colour based medium like pastels. And that's just the same with the little details here on the muzzle that I am adding. They are lighter, but they're only appearing as bright as this because the layers underneath there and what's next to it are nice and dark. I've always made sure here that my contrast is nice and strong. It would be at this time, if I felt like my lighter details weren't showing up, I would then have to go over this, darken the entire area again, and then reapply my lighter layers. It seems like a little bit of a hassle at the time, but it, do it will make a difference to the end portrait if you can get a little bit more contrast there. One other important element when drawing shiny fur is it is more reflective. So you're going to have more colours in the shadows and the highlights. So for something like this, on the darker sections of the fur, you'll notice that my base layer contained quite a lot of browns. The same with the area of the highlights, I'm going to be using some purples and some subtle blues. So if you do notice that there are additional colours in the shinier fur, adding those colours will give more of that illusion of the sheen within the coat. So those additional colours do make that end portrait more three-dimensional. When you're working to capture shiny fur, the light source is crucial. Now you'll notice there that under the eye, there are some mid-tone highlights, but they're subtle. They're nowhere near as bright as the ones on the bridge of the nose and on the top of the head above the eyes. If I was to be making my highlights on the lower part of the face, below the eyes, the same value and the same brightness, I'm going to be adjusting that light source. And in terms of then drawing the shinier fur, you're not going to have the same impact. And with any portrait, I always put it away for a day once I think it's finished. The reason being then, I can look at it with fresh eyes. If I don't notice that there's anything that needs to be changed, I know it is definitely finished. But sometimes because we spend so many hours, you know, days, maybe weeks on one portrait, we can get blinded by the details and not notice things that we've either made a slight error on or that we haven't picked up on from our reference photo. And only then when I don't notice anything that needs to be changed, will I photograph it, send that to the client and then, you know, package it up, mount it, send it off to their new home. And that just brings me on to one other thing. I do often get questions about how I mount my work. So I do have a video on Patreon showing the entire process with me mounting one of my portraits. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial, if my Patreon and slower tutorials are of interest, I will link that in the description below. So I really hope the tips and techniques that I've shared here were useful. If they were, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you want to get notified of future content, hit the bell and the subscribe button. I've got a couple of really exciting projects that I can't wait to finish. I'm just going to be finishing part two voiceover for my Highland Cow tutorial for Patreon. And once that's finished, I will have a time lapse tutorial on YouTube. And this month's acrylic Patreon tutorial is a long haired cat, which was absolutely stunning. We had a beautiful reference photograph for that. So again, once I get the voiceover and the time lapse version, that will also be uploaded to YouTube as well. If you have any questions, anything art related, pop them in the comments below. I am more than happy to help. And I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week.